Hello and welcome to another edition of UFO Video Addicts. Let me give you a preview of what I got coming up in this video. Uh, the first is a triangle UFO that was taken in, I think this is in, oh yeah, May of 2021. Not too sure what country this is. Also have this uh, video from 2008 of a UFO in Mexico. Uh, let's see, this was a cigar UFO seen entering the ocean, I think in or, yeah, Indonesia TV. Um, I also have this um, old video. This was uh, posted a while ago, but it was just recently uploaded again. Uh, I think this is in North Carolina someplace. And this guy um, filmed these lights out over the water. Also has have this um, newspaper article about um, someone seeing uh, what looked like um, I think it, what looked like a Tic Tac UFO. Also have this video about a um, airline airplane pilot who uh, saw a UFO. Uh, let's see, here's an article about a Navy pilot who saw the uh, Tic Tac UFO and filmed it. Also have this video about a UFO sighted near the uh, International Space Station uh, from the Express. Uh, let's see, this is a video from Bright Insight. The other day I had posted an article about um, the Reichardt structure possibly being Atlantis. And here is this video by this guy, um, Bright Insight, who goes into more detail of why he believes uh, this was the uh, site of Atlantis. And then last is this article from Ancient Origins um, indicating or suggesting that uh, there's an entrance on top of the Sphinx's head based on this um, illustration here of um, someone being pulled out of the Sphinx's head. But anyways, we'll take a look at that. Now let me go to this first video here. Let me go full screen. As you can see, this is a graduate of the Filmmaking School of Vertical Cinematography. Yeah, that's definitely one object there, but I have no idea what uh, what it is. Let me go to the next video. Let's see, UFO filmed in 2008, hovering in Mexico. Well, anyways, there's that one. I got a lot of videos to uh, go through today. Well, let's see. This one here is out of India. And I think this was just um, posted. Yeah, May 23rd, yesterday. So let's see. Let's check this out here. Benda berbentuk lonjong hitam terekam meluncur cepat ke bawah dari atas langit. Sebelum sampai di air laut, benda misterius itu terlihat seperti mengeluarkan asap hitam. Saat jatuh ke laut, tidak terlihat adanya dentuman maupun percikan air laut yang besar. Rekaman video ini pun akhirnya viral. Okay, so they're just going to keep um, repeating that over and over again. But, you know, again, how many UFOs or how many videos 
do you have to see of UFOs coming in and out of the oceans before you come to the realization that that's probably where they live. And that's probably the reason why our military runs into them, the Russian military runs into them, and we've been literally seeing them for thousands of years because we are not alone on the planet. Uh, let's see, here's another one of some UFOs over the uh, ocean. I can, I'm pretty sure this was, um, I've posted this before, but check this out. This guy at all, and then all of a sudden, bam, what is that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Uh, the video just stopped. Hmm. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's that. I'll leave a link in the description, but I'm not too sure if it's going to work still. Well, let's see. Yeah, now here is an article. I think this is... Uh, I don't remember what date this was, but... Uh, this is intelligent life forms from other worlds apparently have taken a hands-off attitude towards friction among Earthmen until they threaten to destroy themselves or other civilizations in the universe. This theory was advanced last night by a design engineer, Daniel W. Fry, and he should know. He took a joyride in a flying saucer, he said at White Sands Proving Grounds, New Mexico, July 4th, 1950. Fry said, however, that the people from outer space are interested in significant developments on Earth and have appeared after the A-bomb and H-bomb testing and now the Sputnik launchings. Fry, who spoke last night at a meeting of Sacramento Unidentified Flying Objects Club, noted there have been upsurges of UFO sightings after each of these events. They're not, um, there are many people who could not accept the knowledge of intelligent beings from other worlds, he said, yet they would have to accept it if they were told the truth, and every psychiatrist knows what would happen to them. Fry said, we will never catch up with the Russians in rocketry, well, it's nothing. Let's see, here he describes the craft. The polished metal surface caused a tingling in his finger tops when he touched it, and he was warned, better not touch the hole, pal, it's still hot. Fry said the voice later explained that the force field of the hull would have caused overproduction of antibodies, which would have eventually killed him by congesting the liver. Uh, let's see. Yeah, but this, yeah, he goes on and describes what the craft looked like. And, uh, the, and the reason why um, they're waiting to make contact. But trust me, it's, it's happening real soon. It's happening real soon. Anyways, uh, let me go on to this. Anyways, let me go on to uh, this video here. Pilot Shannon Davis describes a craft in 1980 with a tapered point with at the back a spinning ring. That looks an awful lot like what was retrieved at Kecksburg 1965. Sir Churchester saw the same in 1931. One of his more recent cases involves a young pilot from Novato, California. Shannon Davis is a flight instructor who has logged over 3,000 hours in the air, 600 of those at night. His sighting on the night of November 5, 1980 is typical of the 5 to 10 percent that remain unidentified. I noticed the light off of my left wing at about the 7 o'clock position of the airplane. And because I was in radar contact with Oakland Center because of the IFR flight, I asked them how close that aircraft was from us, and they said that they didn't show anything on radar out there. Then I noticed that it pulled up alongside my left wing, and it was a bullet shape rounded at the front that widened out and tapered to a point at the end. But one of the things I really wondered about it is around the main body, the center, but just past the nose, there was a ring spinning around. And it did a couple of things simultaneously. What happened is the pulsation quickened up on the nose, and the whole thing went to a very bright color. At the same time, the ring seemed to spin faster until that whole ring disappeared. And with a matter of seconds, the brightness of the object appeared to be just like a glowing bright fireball. And I kind of jumped because at first I was, I guess I was thinking of some kind of missile that was detonating. And the thing took off forward, and it shot out to the forward of the nose. I estimated about two or three miles ahead of the aircraft and it made an instantaneous 90 degree right angle turn and it went vertical until it went up out of sight and I sat there looking at it and I didn't know what to think. 
Five minutes later, Shannon saw the object again, and it repeated the same pattern. Only this time, two pilots flying in the opposite direction also saw the UFO. I have to, the best of my knowledge, rule out any kind of meteor or shooting star because I don't know if any meteor that'll come alongside, pace you, and then take off forward and go vertical. Uh, any kind of spacecraft or military aircraft, technically that was defying all physical laws by making an instantaneous 90 degree turn. According to laws of physics, that can't be done. And, you know, I watched it do it twice. It is a perfect shape. It was, it was shaped sort of more like a pearl with a, with a tail. And I watched this thing, and, and, and suddenly it disappeared. And I, was, I, I thought, well, am I um, seeing things? I'd, I'd had a very grueling flight. I'd been waiting for I had engine trouble, and I'd been waiting for hours, expecting to go into the sea, you know. Um, however, suddenly this thing reappeared, and coming towards me. And I thought, well, I'm not going to let it go this time. I, and I kept my look fixed on it. <clears throat> and it approaching fairly fast, and then suddenly, um, well, gradually rather, it, it began to thin out, and it vanished in front of me, and before my eyes, it uh, became a sort of ghost. I could see the water, the waves of the sea through it for one instant, and then it, went, it vanished. You know, when, he, uh, when the Shannon Davis said that um, he had asked air traffic control if they had saw, seen anything on the radar, um, air traffic controllers have admitted that they aren't allowed to um, reveal to pilots that if you know if they do detect a UFO uh, on their radar, they're supposed to lie to them. I mean that yeah, they've had um, several air traffic controllers admit to that. But anyways, uh, let me go to this uh, article here from the New Yorker or the New York Magazine. Navy pilot who filmed the Tic Tac UFO speaks. It wasn't behaving by the normal laws of physics. Now again, yeah, here's pilot here, pilot here, and a pilot here. You know, we've, we've been seeing these things for a very long time. So again, it's, it's blatantly obvious to me that um, we're not alone on this planet. And um, I'm just amazed that uh, how, you know, all the people who are supposed to be disclosing um, are, are somewhat dancing around that, uh, that reality. But anyways, uh, check out this article here. Um, let's see, this is a video of something that, um, or a UFO that was by the ISS. I think this is the ISS here. Let's check this out. Hello, you just saw some clouds go by. And on the far right side, put your eyes on the far right side, you're going to see a triangle glowing UFO. Now this triangle UFO will at first appear to be four different lights flying in formation, but it's not. This is a single glowing object. Can you see it there? Do you see the triangle UFO moving from the right to the left of the screen? Now this object has four powerful glowing areas, okay? Yes, yeah, so obviously you can see that. But anyways, a link to this will be in the description. Let me go to, um, Oh yeah, so now this is a yeah, 37 minute uh, video here. Um, this is this guy, Bright Insight. He's done several videos of this uh, Reichert structure um, that he believes is the, uh, the location of Atlantis. And yeah, he makes a very compelling argument. Let me see if I can just play this part. Said to have an abundance of exotic fruit and vegetables, which makes the case for it being in North Africa even more compelling considering that we now know that the Sahara Desert what didn't even exist until some somewhere around 11,600 years ago, where it went from green to desert in practically an instant. But many people are not aware of this incredible fact that the Sahara had previously been a lush green tropical paradise at the same time that Atlantis was said to exist. Yeah, I think, and like in this photo, you see some of these white areas. Um, this is, this, that's actually salt. People have gone down there and you can taste the salt. So there was definitely a time when, um, this area was filled with salt water.
But anyways, um, yeah, it's a you know, 37 minute video. It's kind of long, but uh, definitely interesting. And like I said, he makes a very compelling argument uh, to prove that um, this was the location of Atlantis. Now, let's see this last article here. The big Egyptian things cover up hidden chambers and excavated mound and endless denial. In 1935, Egypt was still the main draw for archaeologists digging for answers. It was hardly more than a decade since the British Egyptologist Howard Carter discovered the tomb of Tutankhamun on November 4, 1922, that had lain nearly undisturbed for over 3,000 years. Yet, that is another amazing story still to be investigated. However, right now, our attention is focused on the latest attempt to hide the real ancient history of an unknown civilization that left us great wonders both above and below the sands of the Giza Plateau. The first news of a secret city hit the world press in the first week of March 1935. By July of that year, much more had been found, and the Sunday Express ran an article by Edward Armitage, who had just returned to England from Egypt, where he had watched the excavation of an ancient Egyptian city that was then thought to date back 4,000 years. Media silence. Then came silence, as if every living Egyptologist had lost all interest in this wonderful underground metropolis. All their articles during the ensuing years were centered on tombs of queens and shafts that had sunk deep into the ground to burial tombs some time during the 24th dynasty, which was as late as 732 BC to 716 BC. It is very odd that such an immense discovery of a whole underground city dating back at least 4,000 years was ignored completely in favor of a late period dynasty that almost passed without notice. Now, let me see. Let me go to where they talk about uh, here, a hole in the Sphinx head. Around 1798, Vivant Dinan etched an image of the Sphinx Although he hadn't copied it that well, however, he no doubt knew that there was a hole on top of its head as he had drawn an image of a man being pulled out. So here is this um, image. Let me see. I think this is a better. Yeah. Yeah. So you see here someone being pulled out of a hole. And, and you know, and I've seen other photographs where it does... Um, look like um, whatever uh, was covering up the hole is a different um, texture than, than the rest of the head. But anyways, um, that is going to be it for this video. If you like things like this, please give this video a thumbs up. Please share this video. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'll have more things like this. Take care.